Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Marin Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. And now I'll turn it over to our presenters. We are here this evening in session A9, so first up will be Muhlenberg College. Thanks so much, Joel. All right. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Becca Larson. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Muhlenberg College. Muhlenberg is a small liberal arts college located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We're about 60 miles from Philadelphia, 90 miles from New York City. Allentown is the third largest city in the state of Pennsylvania next to Philadelphia um, and Pittsburgh. Within the greater Lehigh Valley, we have a population of about 750,000. Um, and we're part of a consortium of colleges within the Lehigh Valley. So there's a strong collegiate atmosphere um, within the area that we're located. How does one get from Allen from the Bay Area to Allentown is a question I often get. So there's three different airports that you could fly into. Students generally will fly into Newark or um, Philadelphia Airport. That's a direct flight and about an hour and 10 minutes from campus. Or students can fly directly into the Allentown Airport with a connecting flight. So that's about a 10 minute drive from campus. So we're pretty accessible um, in many different ways. Healthcare is the biggest industry within the Lehigh Valley within the area in which we're located. There are three major hospitals and we have partnerships um, with several of those hospitals for both clinical and research opportunities for students at Muhlenberg. As I said, we're a small liberal arts college. We're known for our deep sense of community. As you can see behind me um, on my virtual background, um, every door on campus is red, which is a Lutheran sign of welcoming. And we're a college that's really known um, for holding doors open for one, one another, for our strong sense of community. And we've been called consistently over the years, the Caring College. We're really a place where students um, care deeply about one another and look out for one another. 91% of students live on campus all four years at Muhlenberg with guaranteed housing. And another um, element of the campus experience that is really important to our identity, it's something that our students absolutely love, is the fact that we have really tasty food on campus. Um, we have, uh, we've been ranked um, as some of the best college food in the nation and number one in the state of Pennsylvania for many, many years. So we're really proud of that tasty food um, that students have on campus. Because we're primarily residential, we create a really deep sense of a living and learning community. Our students are engaged just as much inside of the classroom as they are outside of the classroom. We have over 120 clubs and organizations um, and uh, 22 different varsity sports. We compete at the division three level. Our football team made it to the final four in division three championships in 2019. And although our season was canceled this year, um, we know that 2021 is going to be our year. Um, academically at Muhlenberg, we are a liberal arts college at our core. We offer just under 40 different majors at the college. We're known for our very strong programs within the visual and performing arts. We have an incredible theater program, a, a BA in theater that offers six different concentrations, including, including musical theater. None of our um, artistic programs require students to audition, but we do offer auditions for talent-based grants. Beyond our programs within the arts, we have majors in accounting, business, economics, and finance, newer majors in public health and sustainability studies. We have incredible science opportunities, a really strong pre-med program with an 87% admit rate to medical school um, within the United States for our graduates. Our student faculty ratio is about 10 to one at Muhlenberg. So we provide you know, a really um, intimate living and learning experience. Our classes are all small, very discussion-based. Um, and about a third of our students double major at Muhlenberg and another third pursue a major and a minor. So cross-disciplinary study is something that we very much encourage and support at the college. You'll see students double majoring in things like theater and neuroscience or sociology and public health or business and finance. Um, you know, there's so many different academic options for students to pursue. Although you don't have to declare your major until the end of sophomore year. So there's plenty of time to decide what it is that you want to study. 
We also offer um, many different academic partnerships, which are um, somewhat accelerated programs that allow students to pursue graduate study um, once they finish their Muhlenberg degree. So we do have a three plus four program um, in dentistry with the University of Pennsylvania. We have a three plus four program in optometry with SUNY College of Optometry, a newer three plus three program um, at Villanova with their School of Law. And we have early assurance programs for medical school with Boston University and Temple University School of Medicine, respectively. So, you know, I know it's overwhelming to talk about life beyond um, Muhlenberg when, um, you know, you're just trying to navigate the process, but we really do help students um, in their pursuit of graduate study once they complete their bachelor's degree. Um, from the admission process standpoint, we are a common application exclusive school. We have been test optional since 1996. So, um, you know, we use a very holistic review process. We're also a school that really values demonstrated interest. We want to get to know our applicants through the process. And as the West Coast director, I'm the person who um, all of you will be in touch with, who you'll be interviewing with, who you'll really get to know throughout the admission process. So know that I'm here um, to be a resource for you. We automatically consider students um, for merit-based scholarship when they're applying for admission, whether or not they're submitting standardized test scores. So we really, um, you know, like I said, want to get to know you. Um, you know, we make this process as easy as possible, knowing that there's a lot of moving parts in the admission process. Um, and I know there's so much more to cover about Muhlenberg, but uh, six minutes goes really, really quickly. So I'll end with just a quick fun fact about the college. Um, as I said, we have a top ranked theater program and a ton of performance opportunities on campus. Part of our artistic program um, allows students the opportunity to gain um, certification in stage combat. And one of those classes is in swashbuckling, which is single sword fighting like a pirate. So if you have any questions about Muhlenberg, um, you can come and chat with me in the Q&A box. But I'll pass things off to my pal, Caitlin from Ohio State. Thanks so much, friends. All right, and so next up, we'll hear from Ohio State. Hello, everyone. My name is Caitlin James. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, and I am the regional recruitment manager for The Ohio State University. I'm based in San Diego, California. So on the West Coast, and I cover the entire state of California. So very much looking forward to getting to know you and helping you and learn about all that we offer at The Ohio State. So we're the third largest public institution. We are the state flagship in the land grant. So when you think of the UCs and the CSUs, we offer the caliber of research impact, um, but also with the access and affordability of the CSUs. So we're the best of both worlds to our institution. We're also a sea grant and space grant institution. What does all that mean? We do a lot of research. We do a lot of world changing. Um, and we are all over the place when it comes to academics. You can see some of the statistics that we have here on the screen. Um, but some of the things I certainly love to share is that we offer over 200 different majors. Our students are not pigeonholed into one particular thing with over 500 different excuse me, 500 different minors and specializations. Um, we have a law school, a med school, a dental school, optometry program school as well, um, and a vet school. So we have all of those different things. If you're thinking about postgraduate programs, we offer all of those pathways for you at a place like Ohio State. Um, so with some of those programs, some of our popular ones for Californians are certainly going to be our Fisher College of Business, our School of Engineering, um, sports industry, sports management, those types of fields, um, public health, anything medicine related, all of those different things. We are a really great fit for our students, um, especially alongside our Wexner Medical School. So you can see all of the different fields, um, kind of, uh, this is our engineering school in the background here, uh, but we're a good value for a lot of our students. A lot of them are studying abroad. We rank number third in amongst the Big Ten. The Big Ten is our academic alliance alongside our Division One athletic uh, alliance as well. Um, so it's just a robust opportunity for our academics. And we recognize that every student transitions a little differently when it comes to Ohio State. So a couple of programs I really like to highlight is, again, just that experiential learning. The things that you're taking advantage of in the classroom, you will absolutely be able to apply no matter where you may be taken um, throughout your career. Um, our digital flagship program means that we partner with Apple and every student is provided an Apple iPad Air along with pencil, keyboard, case um, to set you uh, 
um, get you set up for success in a tech-driven world. Uh, as long as you graduate from Ohio State, you get to keep it. So pretty sweet deal, uh, especially again in our tech-driven world. Our nationally ranked first year experience program means every student is paired with a peer leader at the start of orientation this summer before you even start college. So if you're needing someone to go to, you always have that person to kind of lean on to ask questions to because we recognize every student transitions a little bit differently. So while academics are certainly a big focus of what we offer, we want to make sure that we are supporting you as a whole person. Um, our Dean of Nursing is actually our college. Um, she also supports our Chief Wellness Officer. So we really have all of those ways to support you as a student, not only academically, but socially, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and all of those different kinds of ways. And then we also have our second year transformational experience to kind of encourage you to continue and engage with our faculty during that second year. A couple of programs I also like to share just our moral scholarship program. So for students that are passionate about diversity based social justice and leadership, this is for you. Our current student body president is uh, actually part of the MSP program. So it just means that you are definitely going to be a changer on campus. Honors and scholars are two different ways to make the university community a little bit smaller for you as well. Honors is that elevated academic experience where scholars is kind of outside of the classroom. So again, ways to make the campus community and get to know people from other perspectives and backgrounds um, that's available to you. And again, those learning communities, again, make the campus experience a little bit smaller. Some of my favorite traditions, of course, um, are just what we offer. So again, we are that, we have over 550,000 living alumni across the world. So, so we love to spell Ohio at Ohio State. I recognize it's not very hard. Um, the fun thing about that is it's just a great way for our students to feel united and connected. Um, this is at a football game. I'm very excited that football is starting in a safe environment for our students this upcoming Saturday. Um, but you can see us on our field. I'm wearing my Buckeyes right now, um, which is actually the nut of the state of Ohio. So we are located in Columbus, the 14th largest city in the country. It's a it's number one place for startups. Um, so if you're looking to start your own business, it's an affordable place in the Midwest. It's a really welcoming community. Yes, we have all four seasons. Yes, you'll be just fine. You'll layer up, you'll buy all the appropriate clothing, um, and you'll be able to really thrive in the Ohio State environment. But it's a really great place for young people. It's a foodie city. And we have about 50, last year we were ranked um, on New York Times, 52 places of places to to visit uh, in 2019. So it really has a lot to offer for our students. Again, it's a welcoming place. You're 15 minutes to the airport. It's easy to get in and out of. So it's a really fun place for our students to take advantage of in that urban environment while being on a traditional college campus. A couple things I'll close out with is just about the application process. We are on the Common App. You'll submit your high school transcript. We are test optional for seniors this year. Um, and then a letter of recommendation is also optional. Apply by early action deadline of November 15th, and you'll be automatically considered for scholarships. Our final deadline is February 1st, also a priority deadline for our FAFSA. So you'll see here just a little bit about that National Buckeye Award. That is our non-resident scholarship up to $13,500. We want to see you on a virtual visit, so please feel free to check that out so we can get to know more about you and you can do a virtual tour, engage with our students, and all those really wonderful things. So that's it for me, and I will turn it over to the next college. All right, and next up we'll hear from St. John's College. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so before we get too far along, um, I'd like to sort of have you guys look over this list. Um, this is uh, what some of our students have in common. Uh, we have students that come to us from all over and with all kinds of interests, but we definitely attract students who love reading. Uh, we attract students who kind of have their own mind about things. Uh, often students are in mock trial, model UN, speech and debate. Um, we also kind of, you know, really reach out to those divergent thinkers. Um, some of our students love crafting, uh, long distance running is very popular, and so is D&D. &D. 
So if you've asked, answered yes to two or more of those kind of questions or interests, then I would ask you to keep listening. You might be a St. John student. So we are St. John's College. We are one college with two campuses, sort of two equal campuses. On the spectrum of small liberal arts colleges, we are teeny, teeny, tiny. We have 800 students total, so around 400 students on each campus. Um, so essentially students study 3,000 years of human thought across seven disciplines in four years. And um, we are one of the colleges that change lives, so we're really proud to be in that consortium. And I highly recommend the ctcl.org website. Um, but St. John's is known for our inquiry-based approach. All of your classes are gonna be Every single class is a roundtable discussion. Our student to faculty ratio, our faculty student ratio is one to seven. Uh, we actually call our professors tutors instead of um, professors because they are sort of at unequal footing with you around that table. So we don't have lecture halls. Uh, you won't have a class larger than 21 students. And you know we welcome diversity in every, every way possible. So what you study while you're at St. John's is sort of a singular program where we don't use textbooks, we use original source texts. So we actually don't have departments, we don't have majors. So we're probably one of four colleges in the United States that doesn't have majors or departments. So all of our students study four years of philosophy, history, politics, law, um, but we also do math and science very heavily. Um, but you're also studying, like you're studying math from Newton and science from Einstein. Um, we actually also ask all of our students to do a year and a half of music. So everyone graduates with a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Arts. Um, so you can do this program at one of two locations, as I mentioned. This is a photo of our Santa Fe campus, and it's at the southern tip of the Rocky Mountains. So we're at 7,000 feet elevation. They're skiing about 17 miles from campus. Um, it's a fantastic little college town. There's a huge art market in addition to lots of mountain biking and rock climbing. Our second campus is located in Annapolis, Maryland. And just a few weeks ago, it was a question on Jeopardy. Um, but the campus is the third oldest college campus in the United States. So very brick and ivy and beautiful. It's right in the historic district of Annapolis. Um, so there's, it's on the, obviously on the water. So there's sailing and crew team as well as an observatory. So a little bit about student life. Uh, you know, we are teeny tiny. And so there are, everyone always asks, well, are there clubs? Like, what, what can I do? Will I be bored? And you will absolutely not be. Um, this is just a quick sampling of some of the things that we've got going on. Um, these are sort of more of the ongoing ones, but there's also a lot of support to start your own club. Um, but these, you know, we have um, some of the more popular ones, chorus and theater and dance and volleyball and student government. So a little bit about financial aid and admissions. Uh, we do use what we call a holistic admissions process. We look at everything. So GPAs, SAT scores are just data points for us, but we're really interested in how you think, about how you reflect around the world, about the world around you. Um, what kind of insight do you have? What kind of questions do you have? Um, we do participate in the Common App, and we also have an application directly to our website. The nice thing too about um, the application is that it is, um, once you fill out that Common App or the app on our website, it is simultaneously an application for merit aid as well. But we did lower our tuition a couple years ago um, and we rolled the price back about 10 years, but we still understand that this is still a lot of money for people. So we also have need-based aid and um, we're very much committed to working with you individually, even if we need to appeal the award, um, it would be me that works with you or your family to kind of help you figure out what it would take to get you here. So we're really proud of our financial aid process. Over 85% of the students receive financial aid and our financial aid office is, uh, is staffed by two, by four or five amazing people and you'll actually get to know them and they care about your family and your circumstances. So just a quick bit about what others are saying about us. Um, Forbes magazine calls us the most rigorous college in America. Princeton Review ranks us pretty high, as does US News and World Report. But what can you do with a St. John's education? Truly anything you want. Um, here's a sampling of some uh, alumni in Northern California. And you can sort of see from the variety that they can just do anything from business to um, startups to um, journalism and funds. Our students do really well on the, on the LSAT. A great law program. But basically, you know, this is done through and what you do after St. John's, you're supported to do that. 
um, through our Career Services Office. So we have internships and job shadowing and alumni that are just really eager to help out. So this is a departing shot of our, oops, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we do have to keep moving. Yep. So next up, we will hear from Kalamazoo College. All right. Okay, so um, First of all, my name's Andrew Grayson. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Kalamazoo College, and I would be your admission counselor. I work with students all up and down the West Coast. Um, we're gonna do a real quick run through of some stuff about Kalamazoo, but first, where are we? So we are in the city of Kalamazoo in Michigan, um, right here in the middle of the Midwest. Um, Kalamazoo, I think, it bears mentioning is not a teeny town in the middle of nowhere. And I think sometimes my students from Northern California are surprised when they land at our airport and there are no cows and there are no cornfields. <laughs> um, certainly those things exist very close by, but Kalamazoo itself is actually a pretty vibrant little town. Um, it's about um, yeah, almost 100,000 people in the city itself and about 300,000 in our metro area. And a lot of those are college students, about 30,000 of them. Um, like I said, pretty easy to get to us via our own airport, but we are about two hours equidistant between downtown Chicago and Detroit, pretty close to Ann Arbor and East Lansing, if you have any friends going to some of our big state schools here in Michigan. We are very different from that though. So Kalamazoo College is a pretty small place. Um, we have about 1,500 undergraduate students. Um, so definitely on the smaller side, not quite as small as St. John's, our friends over there, um, but definitely a smaller, more intimate undergraduate only environment. Um, and our campus is not a huge spread out space. It's really more of a neighborhood. Uh, we are about a 15 minute walk to the center of town. Um, so we're kind of right on the edge of our historic district. Um, and that means that there's a lot of opportunities for students to get off campus, to meet people at the other larger universities in our city, um, to get involved in local nonprofits or one of the several Fortune 500 companies that are based here to do research or internships, things like that. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how that factors into our curriculum in a second. Um, Smallish classes, um, a relatively low student to faculty ratio of about 13 to one. Um, means that you're going to be getting to know the people that you're in class with. Uh, they won't be strangers, at least not for long. Um, and certainly we are a school that values diversity. We have an increasingly diverse um, population and also a lot of investment in access and equity and outcomes. Um, most of our students do earn financial aid um, and uh, that helps certainly with affording the private college tuition. Um, and uh, other things to note here, about 97% of our faculty have a terminal degree in their field. Um, and also we hire people to be good teachers, not just to be good researchers or because they've written an interesting book. We are also a proud member of the Colleges That Change Lives. Um, that's an excellent organization if you're just getting started and you wanna check out a bunch of schools. Um, and we are in the top 2% of colleges and universities for the percentage of our students who go on to receive a PhD. So some basic stuff about the K plan. Basically there's four pieces. We have a very open and flexible curriculum, so you can choose one of our 65 majors, minors, concentrations, and programs and mix and match those things together. Um, you really get to be in the driver's seat. Also, most of our students engage in professional development and hands-on learning. All of our students are able to study away or study abroad if they want to, and about 80% of our students do. Um, we have programs across six continents and I think about 35 countries. Um, and then everybody finishes their time with us by doing a senior project, basically a capstone where you get to dive deep into something that really matters to you. It's an excellent launch pad for students who are heading into the workforce. About 98% of our students were able to find work in this last graduating class, which is excellent. Um, and then uh, we are, like I said before, a lot of our students head off to graduate school. About 85% of our graduates historically have gone on and received an advanced degree. So, how to get in, right? This is the important stuff. Um, similarly, test optional to a couple of the other schools that I've mentioned and have been for a while. So those don't factor into your scholarships. Um, the things that we're gonna look closely at are your grades, the challenge of your curriculum, and the common application essay. We will also look at your activities, 
your counselor, counselor and teacher recommendations, and anything else that you want. If you're really funny and you want to send us a YouTube link to you doing stand-up comedy, by all means do so. Um, you know, if you are secretly an amazing poet and you want us to know that, you can send us, you know, a portfolio of your work. We also have some additional scholarships that might be available for students who are engaging in that kind of creative work. Um, I think I lost a slide, but that's okay. Um, what I want to point out is that if you're at all interested in learning more about the college, certainly um, you should contact me. Um, like I said, my name is Andrew Grayson. You can um, get my information off of the website slash we'll be following up with you after this. And um, we know that you're navigating this process without being able to come and see us in person. So please, um, if you'd like to sign up for one of our virtual tours or um, you know, spend some time chatting with our students who are currently spread all over the world because we are also doing this work remotely currently. All right, Joelle, I think we're all set. All right, thanks uh, so much for that. And so then we'll hear from Bucknell University. All right, thank you. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Jenny Kim. I am the Regional Associate Director for Bucknell University. I'm based in Southern California and I am your counselor. I have this, the beautiful state of California. So I will be your point person. If you have any questions about Bucknell, about the application process, anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I will include my email at the end of the slide. So Bucknell University, oh, I'm also an alumna, so if you have any questions um, after our time together, please don't um, hesitate to reach out about on-campus experience and so on and so forth. So Bucknell University is located in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. We are a college town. We are located about two to four hours away from major cities, from New York City, Washington, DC being furthest away, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore, Maryland. Students that choose Bucknell as location are students who want to be in a college, uh, more residential community, the traditional college experience, but have um, be near a major college so they can do a weekend trip with their friends. However, when it comes down to it, they want to um, have that community feel, not just among their peers, but also with their professors. So we are a smaller institution at 3,600 students, mostly undergrad. Um, Students, we only have about 50 graduate students a year, so you will never know who they are because they are never in the classes. We also border a major river, so students take advantage of kayaking, canoeing, paddle boarding um, uh, behind in our backyard uh, in the Susquehanna River. There are three colleges at Bucknell. Let me go back. Uh, we have three colleges at Bucknell, the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Engineering, and the Freeman College of Management, as well as three two pre-professional programs in pre-health and pre-law for those interested in going to medical school and law school. We have over 60 majors within our College of Arts and Sciences, which is our largest college at Bucknell. And one of the coolest programs I'd like to highlight is our NL behavior. We do have a primate lab on campus with four different species. So those who are interested in research, um, please look into the program because it's pretty awesome. We do have um, the College of Engineering, eight majors within the College of Engineering, everything from biomedical engineering to environmental science engineering. Um, uh, our, en our engineering program is ranked seven in the country among undergraduate programs. You have a licensing degree. We also have a dual degree program within engineering. So you can come in and say, I, I know I wanna be an engineer, but I also love theater. And I think that's one of the beauties about Bucknell is that students are double majoring they're studying across discipline and it's highly encouraged at Bucknell to study across discipline because we don't, we want our students to under, have a holistic approach and understanding towards the profession and the career that they will be going into. Our smallest college is our Freeman College of Management. It is our business program. However, we call it management because it's, it covers a bigger um, section and under, uh, we want students to take classes in management, understanding you might be managing people when you go into your career and doesn't have to be business related. Um, but because it is our smallest college at Bucknell, we, it is the only program that requires a direct entry. So you have to apply into one of the seven majors in accounting, finance, business analytics, 
uh, management organization, markets, innovation, and design, among a few others. And we have two minors in real estate and management as well. Some of the cool classes, or one of the cool classes that I always like to highlight is a student investment fund. Because our classes are very hands-on in and out of the classroom, our professors work really hard um, to make sure that they have hands-on experience. So the student investment fund gives $2 million to our students to work $2 million of our endowment to students to work with and say, okay, here's what you learned, let's put it into practice and build your experience. As much as our students are involved, um, in the classroom, our students live, uh, are super involved outside the classroom. As you saw, 92% live on campus. We have theme housing, such as social justice, science and technology, food, world language and culture. So these are for students who are interested in a theme, but they don't have to major in that particular major because we want students to engage in very diverse conversations outside of the classroom. We are a division one institution. We have 27 sports, 14 women and 13 men. However, our students are super involved in club sports such as equestrian or water polo um, or rugby. So our students are very active on campus. 50% of our students study abroad um, and we highly encourage students to study abroad even though it's not a graduation requirement. We have a strong alumni presence and support that encourages internship opportunities, as well as job placement. These are the dates uh, for applications. We do not have early action. We do not have interviews. We also are test optional. We went test optional last year. We will be test optional for the next three years. We will consider all students, regardless of testing for merit scholarship. Our scholarship is nomination-based. So you go on our website, you read through all the scholarship and you apply to as many merit scholarship as you wish. We accept both the common and coal application as well. This, this is statistics from last year's um, percentage of students who receive financial aid um, and or scholarships. And lastly, this is my information. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. And so our final presenter for this hour is Beloit College, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. All right. Hello, everyone. We saved the very best for last, I'd like to say. Uh, welcome to this short presentation. So, you know, we've heard a lot about many colleges and obviously all my colleagues here are absolutely fantastic, but it's really hard to condense uh, the, the greatness of any one college or university into six minutes. So I'll try my best and uh, I'll do that by hopefully trying to bring in some of my experience because although I'm the admissions counselor at Beloit who works with California students, and in fact, I'm meeting with one of you next week, I see, uh, I am, more importantly, a proud alum of Beloit who graduated last year and loved my experience so much that I decided to stay and work for the school. More than that, I was actually also an international student, so I flew 3,000 miles sight unseen from tiny Ecuador in South America to Beloit, Wisconsin, of all places, and it ended up being one of the most rewarding and life-changing experiences I've ever had in my life. So, you know, all great colleges are going to tell you that what really makes their college or university great is the people within it. And that holds true for Beloit uh, in terms of its students, its faculty, its staff. It's absolutely remarkable what people do here. And the reason why I don't want to fill out with information just quite yet is because I want you to understand what Beloit is really about and what Beloit is really about is about harnessing human potential. We are in the business of expanding human potential and the realization that who we are is but a stepping stone to what we can become. And so what students come here to Beloit to do is really grow in spectacular, unconventional ways and do a variety of all the many majors that we have, many programs, yes, study abroad, uh, yes, internships, all of those great things, but it's truly the relationships between professors, students, your friends that are at the core of absolutely everything here at Beloit. So I'll just, you know, reduce all of Beloit, which is impossible, uh, and all the incredible experience that I had to uh, four pillars. And those four pillars are advanced mentoring, meaningful learning, vibrant community, and Beloit finds a way. So advanced mentoring is really the way in which we welcome students into the college uh, lifestyle, how to be mentored by some of the greatest professors here at Beloit, how to do college one-on-one, -on -one, how to make use of our career center, how to go about writing the great perfect email to that internship company that you want to reach out to and within 
three days of the Panzani on Beloit, you'll be paired with an academic advisor who will be with you every step of the way for the first two years at Beloit and hopefully as a mentor for a lifetime. That certainly holds true for me. And then advanced mentoring, which is more heavily involved in the first two years, is coupled with our career channels, which are really springboard for you to discover spectacular careers maybe beyond what you've thought of uh, in, in, in the past. So it's really fantastic to be able to have those relationships with professors who will connect you with our great alumni, who will develop these networking opportunities for you to really, really grow. Uh, meaningful learning at Beloit is by far one of the most important things that we have here with a 10 to 1 student faculty ratio and an average class has only 15 and 14 students. Uh, that's, that's really where the magic happens. That's where liberal arts really shines. And that's where, when you are taking a class in say Greek mythology and economics at the same time, which is something I did almost every semester, uh, is, is really something remarkable to behold. So that's something very, very incredible about Beloit. Then of course, there's the vibrant community. The city of Beloit itself has 37,000 people, not in the middle of nowhere either. Really great companies, a beautiful downtown area five minutes away. But other than that, our campus itself is a, a sight to behold, absolutely beautiful in the seasons. And trust me, I, I was someone that was shook by them, uh, given how I had never seen snow before in my life coming from Ecuador. So if you're worried coming from California for the weather, uh, know that you know, nothing that good jacket can protect you from. And if someone like me, quite tropical, could adapt, so can you. And then finally, just Beloit finds a way is just a pillar of us distinguishing ourselves from other schools as leaders in liberal arts. Uh, we were just recently mentioned the top five most innovative schools in the entire country. So that's something that we hold ourselves uh, to quite, quite proudly because I think it reflects the character of Beloit quite well. Other than that, you know, kind of the basics is that Beloit has a little over a thousand students, an extremely diverse population. In fact, we're Wisconsin's most diverse college and oldest college. And we have people from almost every state, 40 plus countries. You're going to be exposed to an incredible amount of uh, really unique people. And I think, again, that's what makes Beloit really, really special. So I'm just going to zoom back into this picture, show you a, a pretty view of Beloit. Uh, over here is our, our main building here uh, on campus, but downtown is just a five minute walk, kind of an industrial look of a city with a fascinating history. And uh, overall, it's just something that really, I think, allows students to follow an academic career, which they're going to be profoundly devoted into. And I like that about Beloit. It's what I did. I studied a variety of different things here. I truly made the best out of the liberal arts. But truly, what I love the most is that at Beloit, you will never have to sacrifice what you're passionate about in pursuit of an academic interest that you're not purely, purely devoted into. So if we're part of the colleges that changes lives as well, and if you want yours changed like mine was, uh, feel free to reach out to me and let's get started on this great adventure together. Thank you all very much for being here tonight. All right, thank you to all of our presenters. Um, we have about seven minutes for Q&A. So I invite all of the students, uh, participants watching to pop those questions in the chat there. And in the meantime, while we keep an eye on the q and I'm gonna invite all of the panelists to turn their videos back on for my favorite part, um, which is when I ask all of you in presentation order to hit us with a fun fact, a unique tradition, even something you didn't get to during your presentation um, but just leave us with some lasting impression of what makes your school special. So we'll go back to Muhlenberg to start. Well, what Joelle isn't telling you is that she's a Muhlenberg alum. So she has her own Muhlenberg stories that I'm sure she could tell. But one, one I unique, know their secrets. <laughs> but one unique um, tradition that our students have um, that happens every year, and it shows what just kind of an artsy place we are is called um, SAC Day. And if you Google it, you go onto the Facebook page, you'll find a lot of information about it. But SAC Day, basically, um, our dance students put on these kind of giant lycra sacks where you can't see their face or anything like that. And they position themselves all over campus. And so it's just kind of this quirky, like bodies moving, but you don't know who it is. And they'll be in the library and the cafeteria and the student center and all these different places. So I think it just shows the strong arts culture that you have, um, that we have on campus. Um, and it's definitely one of my favorite days, um, even though it sounds a little bit quirky. 
Awesome. So um, my favorite tradition at Ohio State is, as I mentioned, we're all about big spirit, tradition, rivalries, that kind of great thing. So um, with our rivalry with the University of Michigan, first off, we don't ever say the University of Michigan. We call them that team up north or TTUN for short. We also will put X's on all of the M's across campus during rivalry week. It's usually the last football game of the semester. Some of my colleagues even go as far as not even using M's and they'll replace them with X's in their emails for that entire week. Um, so it's just a fun way that we can kind of con continue those traditions um, and show that school spirit in such a unique but really fun way. So St. John's is not a sports college. However, we have a longstanding rivalry with the Naval Academy. And every the third week in April for like decades, there is an annual croquet match between the Naval Academy and St. John's College. And uh, it's the whole town comes, there's thousands of people. It's really, really fun. There's tailgating. The midshipmen are wearing their whites and Johnny's are wearing all sorts of things. <laughs> and, uh, and it's a serious game of croquet. Um, and it's not related to croquet, but we do have a mascot, sort of an informal mascot for St. John's College, and it's the axolotl. Um, okay, I'm gonna break with ranks here and share another fun fact about the college. Um, I think one of you had mentioned that your school had a pretty robust social justice program, which I think a lot of ours do. Um, and so one of the sort of fun facts about Kalamazoo, we have, as far as we know, the only building that was purpose built for uh, social justice leadership and research on a college campus. Um, it won some architectural awards a few years back um, and it comes along with about a $35 million endowment to fund students uh, research and internships um, and really anything that they wanna do in pursuit of that question of how do we use the privilege of you know, being in this higher education environment and receiving this kind of education to make the world a better and more just place. And I really love that. I think that that's one of the cool things about being in college in general, and certainly the kinds of schools like ours that, that have those sorts of programs. It's so cool to see what students come up with and the kinds of projects that they end up engaging in. I absolutely love that. Well, Andrew, that's a hard one to follow after. So I'm going to go jump back to a fun fact. I mean, a fun tradition <laughs> of Bucknell. So um, I'm going to share a fun tradition. Um, it happens annually. It's called, I was sharing a little bit earlier in the slide, um, Canoe Battleship. And the fun thing that the fun thing about that program is that it incorporates your faculty and staff. So it's probably the only time in your college career that you can trash talk your professors and deans because you're all in canoes, you're trying to sink each other. It's a two day, it's a two day event during March Madness. So there's brackets happening left and right. I mean, it's pretty serious. Some of the engineering students are like, we're too cool for real canoes. So we're gonna take cardboard boxes and saran wraps and scotch tape. We're gonna create our own canoes. So it's just a very fun time because it happens during midterm. So it's like to try to get all of that, like stress out and cheering on our basketball team who's, you know, maybe playing. So I, I would say that's something that I look forward to every year uh, to see how it goes down. That sounds really, really fun, Jenny. And I'll bring us home with another fun fact, not a tradition, because many of the traditions here at Beloit, I guess you'll have to come and see for your own and live them. But a fun fact is that one of the greatest Hollywood figures of all time, Indiana Jones, is said to be inspired by a Beloit alum, Roy Chapman Andrews, who was a great explorer himself, uh, who graduated a little over a century ago. And that probably has to do with the fact that we have a really amazing anthropology museum on campus. But if that doesn't scream adventure and doesn't want you to, uh, doesn't make you want to come here to Beloit, then I don't know what will. So again, let the adventure begin for all of you, regardless of where that takes you. Fantastic, everyone. So it's so much fun to hear all those those fun facts and traditions. Um, and with that, we are just about at time for this session. So I want to say thank you to all of the presenters and all of the participants who joined us today. When you close the window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. We've got another one starting in just about 15 minutes. 
So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings on the same website where you registered. So thank you again to all of the presenters. I'm sure I'll see a few of the participants in the next session starting in 15 minutes. And for everyone else, have a wonderful evening.